How's it going everybody? Welcome to BA Reviews. Today we're going to be reviewing The Killing Joke. Uh, in my opinion, one of the top five comics ever written, uh, right along with uh, The Watchmen and potentially even V for Vendetta by Alan Moore. Uh, this book is something else. Uh, it's been known as not only a masterpiece, but also a controversial comic. Uh, I was also adapted into a fantastic um, animated movie as well. Um, this is definitely, you know, one of those those works that really had an impact on on my writing as well as how I wanted to, you know, kind of portray themes in my uh, comic and in other works. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right. Of course, you start off with just one of the most uh, iconic. Uh, shots in comics. I mean, Brian Bollard did a fantastic job on this comic with just such intense detailed art, uh, especially when it came to the faces and, and facial expressions. And this is right on display right here. Uh, so again, you know, one of the many masterpieces from Alan Moore filled with psychological themes, powerful dialogue and beautiful art. An intense, brutal, and mind-bending creation. You know, starting out with the opening series of panels, it's free of dialogue and text, where the art just perfectly depicts the main characters as well as the setting. Really gives you a feel for, you know, Arkham Asylum, as well as just how he was going to depict, you know, Gordon as well as Batman. And also give you a quick little um, shot of, of Two-Face as well. But just a really powerful opening that didn't even need to have any text. Um, just, yeah, really set the scene. And I also loved how the very first panel matched the very final panel as well with just the puddle of water on the ground with the rain droplets hitting it. That was really cool to just see them start and finish it, uh, you know, basically with the exact same panel. It's like, you know, it was raining at the beginning, raining at the end. And to me, I think there's something deeper to that as if, you know, maybe it means nothing had even changed, right? Um, the Joker maybe survived and they're just going to continue their vicious circle of fighting each other, capturing the Joker, him getting released, killing more people and on and on and on like we've seen. And I think that's one of the kind of key aspects of Moore's adaptation is exploring that dynamic and that moral quandary of, you know, why is the Joker still alive? And why do they continue to just do this? You know, right out of the gate, Moore's taking a unique approach on Batman. Uh, exploring his fear of committing murder and his obsession over his personal war with the Joker and how it's going to end. Uh, to me, it's pinpointing his naivety. You know, thinking that you can reason with a mass murderer and change him. I think that's one of Batman's flaws in so many adaptations. And I think that's something that Moore is really exploring, not only with Batman, but with Gordon. You know, so right here with this panel, this is, or these three panels, you know, it kind of sets that tone as well. Where Batman's saying, you know, perhaps you'll kill me. Perhaps I'll kill you. Perhaps sooner, perhaps later. I just wanted to know that I made a genuine attempt to talk things over and avert that outcome just once. So again, it's more like he's, to me, he's being kind of selfish, right? He's trying to avoid potential guilt uh, in the scenario that he has to kill him. And it makes you wonder, like, why would he be feel so guilty um, in regards to killing a mass murder? So that's where you know, I think he's really... Uh, exploring the psychological aspects of Batman and the Joker and Gordon. I really liked how he did the flashback uh, to Jordan's uh, Joker's origin. I think this was really well done. It was a really unique kind of take on his origin. Uh, the black and white art was fantastic. And, you know, it was just a, a very succinct origin story. And the dialogue and the scenario really helped you feel Joker's situation and, you know, 
feel his struggles. And it didn't really make me feel bad for present day Joker, right? Or justify any of his actions, but it helped the reader explain, you know, what pushed him over the edge mentally. And of course, you know, the loss of his wife and his child, that makes sense. And then you add on top of that, you know, falling into the chemical, um, you know, wastewater or whatnot, makes sense that it would drive him literally crazy. Um, you know, Boland's depiction of Joker's original appearance and his ability uh, to express character emotions with facial expressions was spot on. Uh, it just looked like a very fitting um, kind of depiction of, you know, how would the Joker look like without, um, you know, at times, you know, some have it be makeup or the change in his skin tone due to the chemicals. But I really, really liked how he had him look and you know, his wife's joker a smile in two of the panels was really fitting too. And I'm sure there's something deeper to that as well. But uh, it was just a very kind of creepy, but um, just necessary origin story. You know, and then there was just some really smooth transitions from the origin story back to Joker in the present day to Batman in the present day to Gordon in the present day and so on. Uh, the pacing was really, really good in this story, and it was really easy to follow. Um, but it, again, it just had a, a really nice uh, flow of transitions from all the different POVs and also going back uh, in time with flashbacks and whatnot. So uh, I just thought Moore did a, a great job with that. And then, you know, you have the first Gordon, you know, family pat, uh, panel where he, immediately calls out how pointless it is to arrest and imprison the Joker. It's a never-ending cycle, and that's what I was uh, describing at the very start with Batman and Joker. Right? It's just this never-ending cycle of they arrest him, he gets put in jail or into Arkham Asylum, and then he escapes or, you know, gets broken out and he goes on a killing spree, plays his games, and it just repeats and repeats and repeats. And again, I think that's the key of what Alan Moore is trying to explore there is, you know, who's really crazy? Is it just the Joker? Is it also the Batman? Is it also Gordon? Is it all three of them? Are they all crazy in their own way? And that's, I think that's what he's really trying to get the readers to explore. And that's what Joker is trying to prove to Gordon and Batman is that, hey, you two are just as crazy as I am, just in a different way. But why won't you admit you're crazy? And in my opinion, yes, I do think, you know, in these circumstances, I do think Gordon and Batman are crazy. And I had a, a previous video where I had kind of brought up, you know, one of Batman's flaws, in my opinion, in some adaptations is his how naive he is and the fact that, you know, after he's caught a criminal or a crazed madman like the Joker, you know, several times and he knows like, Hey, if I work with Gordon, he goes to prison, he's going to kill again because he's going to get out. And to me, the blood is on his hands for those future victims to an extent because he knows it's very likely to happen. And so and the same thing with Gordon. He's just so blindly kind of loyal, right, to the legal system. And you would think, again, after so many times, you would learn that, hey, it's not so black and white. Maybe you got to kind of step over that line to make sure that people are saved or protected in the future. And so, yeah, the Joker's just dead set on proving to them that they are crazy and that their lack of awareness and their refusal to admit that they're crazy drives him even crazier, right? So he is just dead set on proving to them like, hey, you're crazy. I want you to admit it. The fact that they won't admit it and they're, they're not self-aware enough um, to realize it, just that's what's really driving him mad. I think that's why he continues to play those games. And this panel really, you know, reinforces that where Gordon essentially admits <laughs> um, that what they've been doing is, is pointless, right? He says, I hate whenever we jail him. 
I think, please God, keep him there. Then he escapes, and we all sit around hoping he won't do anything too awful this time. I hate it. So he knows there's a very high likelihood that whenever they imprison him, he's going to escape. He's going to go out and do, you know, just crazy acts of violence and rinse and repeat. And then going into the attack on Barbara and Gordon's, you know, kidnapping and and torture, you know, in this part of the book, you know, to me, it's really clear that the Joker is trying to push Gordon over the edge, right? That's the whole point of this portion of the book. Push him over the edge mentally by using his daughter to torture him, you know, hoping to make him break his moral code or prove that Gordon is so obsessed with due process that he won't even get vengeance for what is done to his daughter, validating his belief that Gordon is indeed crazy. And right in that first panel, or two panels there, you know, Barbara Gordon is asking, you know, why are you doing this? And he responds, to prove a point. I think that's the point he's trying, again, to prove is that her dad is crazy. And as well, maybe make him realize, like, hey, this is, what is happening to her is on your hands because you refuse to get your hands dirty. You refuse to, to stop him, essentially. Uh, one thing that I really appreciated with this book is that they didn't go overboard on the visuals or details of what happened to Barbara, as well as the torture of Gordon. It left it up to the reader's imagination. I mean, obviously, it's clear that some pretty gnarly and nasty things happen, but again, I appreciate that they didn't really show too much or go too overboard there. Uh, The circus freaks freaks were a great touch and and very fitting uh, when it comes to the Joker, so very well done there. And, um, you know, Gordon telling uh, Batman to bring Joker in by the book, again, just validates Joker's view that Gordon is crazy, that he has blind faith in the legal system, and, you know, instead of trying to prevent what happened, you know, and this is, again, this is where Batman and Gordon do frustrate me from time to time in different adaptations is instead of wanting, you know, vengeance or revenge, like a normal human father, right? And coming to the realization that, hey, if we don't take him out or just ensure somehow that he can't do such acts again. You know, they have the ability to prevent what happened to his daughter from happening to other women or other people. And yet, they're okay with just continuing that never-ending cycle by going by the book. And uh, so again, I think that's what Moore is really trying to drive home is that kind of psychotic faith and um, how crazy that no kill rule really is when you think about it. And that leads into, you know, Batman's chase and the final joke, you know, Joker admits that, you know, when he saw what a black awful joke the world was right due to his wife and child being killed and um, just his, unfortunate circumstances with running into Batman and falling into the uh, chemicals that it drove him crazy, which also reaffirms that he believes Batman is crazy Um, because, you know, he says right in the panel, you know, I at least admit it. Why won't you? And Batman, again, he's being naive and he's being selfish. In my opinion, he's more focused on helping the Joker versus thinking about, what keeping him alive could lead to, right? Could lead to more people being hurt like Barbara, uh, more people being killed. And again, instead of wanting to get vengeance um, or revenge on behalf of Barbara and all the other people that he's killed, he's trying to just reason with him um, and talk to him. It's like you're more worried about him and keeping potential guilt of killing someone off of your conscious instead of thinking of the city as a whole and all these innocent people. It's pretty crazy, right? 
And then you have the, the killing joke per se, right? A beautifully ambiguous ending that leaves the reader pondering and just hungry for more. You know, a lot of people wonder, did Batman stab the Joker, right? In that last, you know, you know, the second to last or whatnot panel there where he's leaning into the Joker. Um, is he choking the Joker? Uh, to me, I don't think it's either. Uh, I mean, if anything, it's possible that he stabbed the Joker, right? Uh, it would make sense since it's called the killing joke that maybe he killed the Joker there. Uh, I don't think he choked him just because based on the art, you know, it doesn't look like his hand is in that position. Uh, the other question it kind of leads folks to is, you know, did he just crack? Did something snap uh, in Batman's mind to simply just make him start laughing uncontrollably. And if he did crack, what would that lead to? Right? Would that lead to Batman breaking his no-kill rule? Um, or would it lead to him maybe becoming more of a villain? So my only you know, thing that I guess I would complain about but also appreciate is I wish the book was longer, right? I wish that there was a follow-up to actually give you that answer but it was also really cool that they left it ambiguous and for you to just interpret on your own so only a phenomenal writer could could have set this book up like this i mean this was so well done given kind of the joker's persona and batman's history to end it like this and it was just again such a masterpiece by, by Alan Moore. And yeah, just between the art, the dialogue, the pacing, like this is really similar to, you know, Dark Knight Returns, you know, the another book I, I recently reviewed. So please check that out. Just it's a masterclass in how to utilize art, dialogue, and the flow of the story to really make an impact on the reader and just create a story that um, not only can be famous, but can just really, really stick with everybody. So, yeah, like I said, just one of the best books out there. You know, for me, it's definitely in the top five um, for me with Dark Knight Returns, with uh, The Watchmen. But, yeah, just a fantastic book. And definitely a book for people to study when they're first getting into comics and trying to learn how to create a a comic. I mean, obviously, don't just try to copy it, but just learn how, you know, Moore was able to use. I mean, he only, I think, I mean, it's roughly like 60 pages or less, but it's not that long of a story, right? He doesn't have a high page count, but he really worked with the real estate that he had and he really made the dialogue count and really made the art speak to the reader. And there's a lot of lessons in that because you get some books that are just way too word wordy. Um, there's too many info dumps, things of that nature. But again, this is a very, very uh, succinct and just powerful story. So would love to hear your guys' thoughts and comments on, on the story, right? Um, see how many people, you know, feel the same way or maybe have other theories about different parts of the book or the ending and yeah just see you know hey who else was inspired by this book who else really loves this book and like i said in, in my previous review i really want to do reviews on books that have had an impact on me and that i just love you know i want to talk about the stories that are that are inspirational and that are helping me mold my comic and my stories and of course this is is one of those so appreciate everyone tuning in uh, before I go, please check out my Vigilante's Creed campaign on Indiegogo. It's two novels and a mini comic about a gargoyle and a team of vigilantes fighting terror in Detroit. Uh, really, just think Dark Knight Returns meets Hellboy. Just really gritty street level um, novelization as well as a mini comic um, with just really, gr really gritty vigilantes and a gnarly villain that uses psychological um, terror and manipulation to create super soldiers in the city of Detroit. So um, yeah, the link is in the description. 
Um, you know, you also have a duology version, which is two novels in one. And then, again, the mini comic, which the purpose of that is to introduce you to all the major and supporting characters. So you know exactly what these characters look like, you know, key information about them while you're reading. So it's a more immersive reading experience. And it depicts some of the major scenes from the novels as well. So again, uh, you know, leave a, leave a comment. Love to hear your guys' thoughts, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and God bless.